So you want to fix your running form. Well, turns out there is no one right way to run, but there are a set of best practices that can help reduce your risk of injury, improve running efficiency. I will put a video somewhere on screen, but this is what I used to look like running and this is me now. So today we're going to go through a head to toe checklist of running form cues so you can find the best form for you. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I put together a free form checklist that will summarize everything I share in today's video, including my favorite form cues to feel an immediate difference in your running. So I'll link that down below, but tag me, let me know if you get it, because I think you're gonna love it. First cue is head tall, eyes forward. Where your eyes go, your head follows. So if you're looking down at the ground, your head is gonna tilt down. Something you will often see with distance runners, especially toward the end of a long run or a marathon, like as they're fatigued, is that their body will start to slump, the shoulders will roll forward, the head will follow. And so in an attempt to keep their eyes up, you'll get this chin out, head forward posture, which not only is that going to strain your neck muscles and neck joint, but it's also going to restrict your breathing. What I mean when I say the head tall cue for running is to imagine an invisible string lifting your head up toward the ceiling. Our next cue is relaxed shoulders. So especially if you're new to running, it is normal to feel anxious. And the second you start moving to have your shoulders go like this. Now, the problem is that these same muscles that lift your shoulders up into that scrunched position also play an important role in breathing. The muscles of your neck, chest, and shoulders are considered secondary breathing muscles, but when they're always turned on and they're always working either due to poor posture in your everyday life or getting really tense when you run, this can lead to altered breathing patterns, making it harder to get the air that you need. Next up, natural arm swing, because I am sick of hearing that your arms should move front to back only. I mean, does this look natural? Because that is what I tried doing. The reality is that your arms are on either side of your body. They are moving back and forth. There is naturally going to be some rotation when you're running and trying to stop that is just a waste of energy. The main concern with arm swing is that you don't want it to be so excessive from side to side that it takes away from the forward momentum that you are creating. It's hard to focus on what your arms are doing. So instead, I like the cue of natural arm swing. I don't focus on my arms. I set them up for success by relaxing my shoulders, having a comfortable bend at the elbows, and then letting them follow what the rest of my body is doing. A general rule of thumb that you will hear is to try not have your arms cross the center line of your body. So like literally, if you divide your body in two, try not to have them pass that. Next cue is soft hands. Distance running is all about efficiency, which means no wasted energy. So something as simple as clenching your hands into fists can send signals to your brain, telling it you're stressed, telling it you're fatigued, which even if you are, if there were ever a time for gaslighting, it is while you are running. So what I mean by the soft hands cue is to think of whatever position your hand would naturally land in if you were to set it down. Limp wrist, relaxed wrist, slight bend in the fingers, that's it. Moving to the lower body, we've got the hips high cue. So if you ever feel like you are heavy on your feet or really lumbering side to side while you're running, chances are you are not engaging your core or glutes properly. The good news is that this cue can fix all of that for you. So if I were to tell you to stand tall, what you'd probably do is lift your head up high and pull your shoulders down and back. The hip side cue is going to bring that same energy to our lower body. So shifting your focus down, I want you to get as long as you can from your heel to your hip, pressing your feet down into the ground, visualizing lengthening your legs. So we're lifting those hips up. You're going to feel your pelvic floor lift, your glutes engage, your core contract, all of that we are getting from one cue. Now a form you I disagree with is to lift from the knee. What I mean by natural knees is similar to arm swing, 
Let your knees follow what your body is doing. Your knees are not driving the movement of running. And an important distinction here is between sprinting and distance running. The form for those two, the technique is completely different. If you were to think of running as a spectrum, sprinting is all about being explosive, not efficient. You want to put as much energy as possible into each stride, whereas distance running is the opposite. You want to conserve energy. You want to be efficient. So rather than having a big, huge knee drive on each stride, you were using forward lean to keep that momentum going. Which brings me to maybe our most important form cue, and that is to lean from your ankles and feet. So forward lean is a term that you will often hear when people are talking about running technique. And the reason it's so important is because it can help reduce overstriding, which is probably the biggest contributor to running related injury. So if you've been following our form cues up until now, you should be standing nice and tall with your head stacked over your shoulders, stacked over your hips, stacked over your knees. We've got a straight line from our head down to our thighs. How do we start running? It is not by bending at the knee and reaching out and in front of your body. That's gonna have you land with a ton of impact on each stride. Instead, we want that foot landing under our center of gravity. So we're gonna keep that nice straight line that we had standing tall and leaning from the ankles and feet. Now a common mistake is most people will break at the hips because they're afraid of falling on their faces. They'll say, okay, I'm leaning forward. It's not working, it still feels funny. The way that we build confidence, leaning from the ankles and feet with this nice tall posture is by taking really, really small steps. Which brings me to our final form cue and that is fast feet. Some people call this small steps, but I prefer fast feet because it reminds me that I can maintain a high cadence even when I'm running slowly. Cadence is just the technical term for how many steps you take per minute. And the research is clear that a higher cadence can soften your landings and reduce the impact on your body. The way I think about fast feet is to imagine that the floor is lava. As soon as one foot lands, I'm pulling it right back up again. So that is it for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, definitely grab the Run Form Roadmap. It is completely free. It is going to summarize everything we just talked about and take you step by step through how to apply this to your running. I am working on a follow-up video all about strength training for runners because hitting the right form is one thing, but maintaining that form requires strength. So if there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.